de Souza. I'm talking, I'm talking from Brazil. Uh, and in this presentation, I will be addressing about space agriculture research from US and Russian space program experiments to the salad platform. So uh, this summer, I am, I am having the pleasure to be a research assistant in RA on the salad project with Dr. Rafael Loreiro and also Gina Mizra. Um, just a brief summary on, on my lecture here and my presentation. I will be uh, talking about the Space Agriculture Laboratory Analysis Database, the SALAD project. Uh, I already um, aware that you had the presentation, a previous presentation from my colleague talking about the SALAD. So for now in this presentation, I will be uh, just giving you a brief overview about our project with um, a good purpose. Uh, and then I'll be talking about the the building the database about the efforts that we have done to build the database, all of the uh, air A's. And after that, I'll be talking about plants in space studies from the 60s to the 90s, the efforts from the Americans and the Russians, um, and also the Soviet Union in the time at the time. And I'll be addressing also some final considerations on uh, what I'll be talking here. Uh, just to know, it's also a pleasure to be addressing this, this question, this research that I have, I have been conducting for the Blue Cyclone and to you all. Well, about the SOLID project. Um, the SOLID project emerged with a purpose to be a repository for other crop research that has been conducted in microgravity. All of, as I mentioned, all of the efforts that have been, have been made um, since the beginning of studies with plants in space and with the goal to feed astronauts um, with fresh food, fresh crops. And the salad will be a free and searchable database that will be available online for researchers and space entrepreneurs and also enthusiasts on plant studies to use this learn to state of knowledge on space agriculture to inform experiments and also technological development. So this is just to let you know, this is the, the icon, the picture of the, the idea of the salad. Um, and uh, uh, with that, we came up with this goal to, to go deeper on studies of plants in microgravity and knowing how to grow fresh food and plants and with this goal to process air and, air and water for life support in space. Uh, will be critical to the future of human being and letting them um, they, to live in space for long periods of time in a sustainable way. So I bring here these two amazing pictures uh, from NASA. The left one, as you can see, it was the first veggie meal, uh, ve vegetables meals, uh, meals that the astronauts, the Scott Kelly and the other Na as NASA astronaut has eaten that this crop was cultivated on veggie uh, chamber. And this other one is just to have a brief idea about um, the, the well-being associated with cultivating crops, uh, the palatability, the taste, the flavor, also the smell of crops. This uh, allow the astronauts a good psychological benefit uh, for them in space, in any space environment. And um, a lot of these studies uh, has been conducted to understand plant behavior and the development under reduced, reduced gravity and in closed environments. So I bring here just this, some pictures uh, about these studies, just so you see um, from the left to the right, just you see here the, the, the dynamic of the water in the space environment, also the root uh, orientation of crops uh, with uh, the reduced gravity and microgravity and other studies with crops. Uh, also uh, here, the, the Mizuna flower, uh, sorry, the Zinia flower um, that also have, have been uh, cultivated with the goal to, to be an ornamental crop, ornamental plant in space and other studies that have been conducted from NASA and other space agencies. So 
about the Space Agriculture Laboratory Analysis Database. Uh, we have here some categories of research that me and my colleagues have been addressing, looking for some papers, um, reading some papers and trying to uh, put all the information together with one big purpose. So just to highlight here, the leafy greens and lettuce studies, the US and Russian early studies with uh, on plants, on plant uh, cultivation in space, also calorie dense crops, seed to seed studies, seed exposure studies, phototropism, gravitropism, high, nutri high nutrient yield crops, fruit plants, and medicinal and ornamental plants. Well, um, with this goal to build the database, uh, as I mentioned, we uh, are here to put everything together in one platform to make the scientific content more accessible to all for those interested in conducting other research and future research on plants in space. So uh, we started to link uh, between, uh, to provide some linking between scientific structures of space agriculture uh, papers to build this database. So we came up with uh, research. We also provide the location and uh, also if the big goal was um, to separate uh, between plant the studies and research from uh, between plant species. And each one of these studies have this list of, uh, of outcomes that can be addressed, the goal of investigation, the motivation, the research method, also the experiment, observation, and results. For now, in the summer, we have uh, put our efforts on the goal of investigation and especially on the results that had, has been addressed from uh, previous studies. And here, some locations, uh, since the beginning of this kind of research, uh, we have separated on our, data, our, our database um, the categories of spacecraft from crew to uncrew, also the space plans, uh, also some terrestrial location experiments, the, the, the chambers that, ha that has been conducting uh, the control uh, experiments from, from specific studies. And the growth chamber, uh, it can be also a specific chamber, a specific hardware, uh, even in space and also on, on, a, uh, on the terrestrial growth chamber. And here I bring here just a timeline of some space stations uh, because uh, much of the effort, especially on, on the U.S. and Russian space program, has been conducted inside of these uh, of the uh, space stations. Uh, so, as you can see in this timeline, from the sa salute, uh, the first salute, until the seventh, seventh one, and then the Mir station, the Skylab, and uh, the, since from here to the International Space Station, but also some studies have been conducted on the bio, on the bio satellite, also on the shuttle program, space shuttle program. And well, all of this efforts has been done since now, since now. And considering that for now we are having some players on the space uh, station uh, building in the space station, especially China, and uh, also the continuous uh, studies on International Space Station. This can be addressing, we have now the opportunity to address many other studies with other purposes and goals um, to establish maybe a greenhouse on the moon and Mars. And from uh, the early studies uh, with plants in space, as I mentioned, this was especially conducted by US and um, uh, Soviet Union and Russia after that, uh, from the 60s to the 90s. And just to let you know, this was not, this wasn't a kind of um, see which uh, space program has done more studies or something like this. This is also uh, to show you, to present to you that the efforts was, was done from both of the space programs. And they also came up with uh, uh, like putting together the efforts and addressing new kind of research. And uh, well, uh, this was a combination, more a combination of efforts from both space programs which addressed a lot of, which came up with a lot of outcomes 
for what we know now about plants in space. So some questions that these studies can provide to us is to know what experiments were attempted, attempted, uh, what plant species were used, what, what was the experiment size, uh, what, how the crops has behaved in space, in the space environment, how they worked out, and what went, went wrong. This is also a very interesting question. Um, and here, uh, just to have an overview about the plant, plant growth chambers uh, on, the, on these uh, studies. So from Salyut Space Station into the ISS, we can see many plant growth chambers that has addressed these studies. And for now, uh, we, have, we have started, uh, especially with good studies from uh, the, the Vason uh, growth chamber and also the, the that is that a block. And until now, we have the Lada greenhouse. We had the Lada greenhouse and also the veggie in the ISS. But all of them was uh, so important for, for these studies. And here I bring to you some advances in the previous uh, studies with plants. So from the US side, we have good experiments to evaluate the feasibility of the using plants as part of the bioregenerative life support systems in space, uh, especially on this on the BPS, the biomass production chamber. Um, this was a more a, a terrestrial growth chamber here on Earth. Um, and uh, especially studying uh, this production of potato in a 418 day study. And then some experiments with lettuce, onion, radish, tomato, and pepper, uh, trying to understand how they behave with a temperature, different temperature rates, CO2, uh, CO2 rates, and also light levels. And after that, studies on the effects of pressure and productivity and bioprotective value of some crops, especially these leafy greens, radish, and lettuce. And uh, the development of the veggie chamber, uh, which allowed for the first time the, the astronauts to eat uh, crops in space, in the ISS. And from the uh, Russian side, they have started uh, with the cultivation of higher, high, higher plants on ecological parameters uh, inside a closed biospheric system and uh, allowing the control of environmental parameters just uh, to have a idea, the first one was the ISVET uh, greenhouse that allowed this control and automation of the, of the environmental parameters on the plant chamber. And uh, also the growth of first space vegetables, such as the radish and Chinese cabbage, and harvested also in these microgravity conditions. And then these crops come back to Earth to conduct some analysis and see uh, how they work, how the experiment worked out. And uh, also some studies on morphometrical and morphological analysis, the alteration in plant characteristics and the development uh, changes on the development and growth of, this, of the crops. And uh, they had uh, came up with an experiment that plants, especially uh, the, the wheat, uh, that ha they have produ the produced um, like the wheat heaps with no seeds, but they had a good outcome on biomass in this experiment. Well, uh, this was just a brief overview on these studies uh, to let you know. And for my final considerations, uh, I have noticed uh, from these studies that we had good relationship between the hardware and the biological outcomes from different topics of research. So the hardware also had a, was a good player, um, has allowed some improvements also on the biological outcomes of crop cultivation in space. And this is really important also, the standardization of useful research for scientific development in space agriculture. So, the database, the solid database is here to allow that for future researchers and also um, the ones that want to uh, provide some effort in this, kind, in this topic of research. And uh, just to, to know, uh, we can see here from press lessons, uh, the early uh, experiments, the early studies with plants in space that has been conducted. And we have now valuable solutions and valuable knowledge 
uh, for the future research of space agriculture. Um, and with that, we can see the effectiveness of a multidisciplinary working group uh, providing many efforts from different sides. Just to let you know, I have good uh, colleagues from other uh, areas. I'm from the engineering, but we have Rafael from the, uh, which is a botanist, an astrobotanist, and uh, the others uh, colleagues that are from different, uh, different areas. So this was a good outcome from the salad. And uh, all of these efforts, uh, I, came, I came here with this sentence too, uh, that was uh, done by Salisbury and his team. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, paper, uh, there are many lessons to be learned from these experiments. One is the importance of being able to do follow-up experiments based on results from previous experiments. A single experiment in space car carried out by a given team may well produce results that are in themselves only marginally valuable. Follow-up studies can be most helpful. So the salad project is here to allow these follow-up studies. And I ask you, what comes next? We can uh, see all of the efforts that has, has been done, especially to put uh, sustainable- maybe, maybe uh, I'm, gonna have to stop you. I'm gonna have to stop you there. Um, we're over on time now by a little bit. Um, okay. Very excellent talk. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. Thank you.